Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. In the process of learning how to make a raised panel cabinet door, in this video I'm going to focus on making the panel. I'm going to show you how to do it entirely with hand tools. It's a great way to dress up your work. Stay with me, I'll walk you through the whole process. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Now we've done lots of videos on making doors. In fact, I'll leave a link below and it'll give you lots of videos that go through the process of making the entire door. But as I mentioned, I want to focus on just the panel. So I got some examples behind me. If you think about what the door does on a piece of furniture, it serves both form and function. The function is it covers an open, open space. Now, if it's an inset door, meaning it fits inside the frame, then it, can't, it has to be dimensionally stable. It can't get wider or narrower. So what you have is a panel inside of a, saw, a frame that is essentially stable. This frame is not going to get any wider and it's not going to get any longer. This is just a piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood that sits in a groove. It covers the space, adds stability to the door, but it doesn't add a whole lot of form. It's not that pleasing to look at. Here's a couple of examples of a solid panel. Same idea. You've got a stable frame and inside you have a solid wood panel. Now this one will expand and contract. However, because of the way it fits in the groove, it's able to do that. Now this one is actually quite simple. It's been cut down on the edges and it's got a little bit of a bevel right there, but it looks nice. However, what we're going to focus on today, and as I mentioned, we're going to do it entirely with hand tools, is the way of making a raised panel. So this one is beveled on the side. It's got a little bit of a frame or a little bit of a, uh, a reveal all the way around here. I'm going to forego that one today, but we've got to bring it down to a tongue that will fit into the groove on all four sides. It takes a little bit of work. It's fun to do, it's a challenge for hand tools, but you're up to it. Let's get at it. In starting this panel, I want to explain to you so that you know exactly why we're doing what we're doing. I'm going to draw a cross section. So that means if I were to take this door and cut it through here and look at the end, this is what we're looking at. First thing we're going to do is draw what would be the frame. And I'm going to keep it really simple. So you've got this rectangular frame, and then you've got a groove in here that the panel is going to fit in. And of course you'd have the mating piece over here. These could represent either styles, which are the vertical pieces, or rails, which are the horizontal pieces. Of course this space has to be filled in. Now I'm going to draw in what we're going to do, which is a raised panel. Now it's made out of solid wood, so the space across the width of the door has to be, a, you, you have to take into account that there are several factors that are going to determine how much room you're going to need in here. What I mean is this. Let's say we put our solid panel in here. Now we're going to have to cut some form of a tongue that's going to fit into this groove. But there's got to be a gap left in here. Depending on the wood, species don't all move the same. Depending on the width of the space, the wider it is, the more it's going to move. And also the third factor would be how much of a contrast is there between the dry period and the damp period. So in other words, how much moisture is this going to suck up? Now, if you have to leave space in here, on the bottom side of your panel, you're usually going to have a rabbit as well, and that rabbit has to have space as well. So you can't have a little bit here and a lot there because it'll come up tight against this part and possibly break your door. So bear that in mind. What we're going to do is have a tongue right here, and then we're going to put a bevel on there, and it'll go over across like this. And on this one, it would just be flat on the bottom, and we would simply cut a rabbit in here. The last thing we would do would be to cut this rabbit to get that to fit into that groove exactly the way we want it. So we've got to take care of this little flat spot. The real hard part in doing with hand tools is getting this bevel to meet that flat spot and right in there not end up with a bad groove on either one. It's a little bit on the difficult side. And of course we do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to work with a piece of wood that looks like this. The grain is running in this direction. Now I suggest that you make all of these cuts first, 
That's always going to uh, result in some tear out on this side, but you can clean it up when you process this edge and then leave this one last because as you do this one, the torn grain there is going to get taken care of when you're doing that one. And we'll talk about that as we go. All right, we're going to start with a piece of three quarter material and we're going to use pine simply because it's easy to work and it's a great material to start on. And here it is. Now, it doesn't matter what the dimension is, but I'll tell you what, how big this one is just so that you can follow along if you're trying to do this. This is seven and five eighths of an inch wide by 15 and seven eighths of an inch long. Okay, right, a lot of things we have to decide. First one is, do we want the panel to actually stip, stick up above the frame? Do we want it to be flush or do we want it to be set in? And even with a solid wood panel, you can do all of that. Well, I'm going to have it actually stick up just a little bit above. So when this is assembled, it's going to, the center panel is going to be higher than the outside frame, which actually adds another dimension to it. So you can really dress something up with it by doing that. So now we need to know how thick. Well, I think this is finished at 13 sixteenths. Yeah, it is. It's 13 sixteenths of an inch. Now we need to know how far in our panel is going to go. We also need to know where the, uh, the, the uh, tongue portion is going to go as well. So I'm going to take my marking gauge and this, I'm going to mark this and I'm not going to mark it uh, as boldly as this, like this if I was actually doing it, but I'm going to mark this as my face. So in from there, uh, I need a quarter inch tongue. I want a bit of a rabbit on this side. So I'm going to make that a little bit heavy. Now, just so that you know. I'm going to leave five sixteenths of an inch down here. So they'll end up being a rabbit that'll be about a sixteenth of an inch deep. So I'm going to make this mark all the way around. This is a marking gauge and you want it to be sharp. The bevel on the marking gauge is on the inside so that as you pull the tool through the wood, it pulls the head of the tool tight to the face of the board. In other words, it's pulling in this direction, which ensures that that line I'm leaving is parallel to this face. Now, I wanted to, I want to decide how far over here I'm going to go. However, what I don't want to do is use my marking gauge because that'll leave a mark there. So this one needs to be done simply with um, a pencil or a pen, whichever you want to use. Uh, we're going to leave, see, so this board is seven and five eighths of an inch wide. It's northern white pine. Um, I'm going to say that if we have, if our groove on our frame is three eighths of an inch deep, if we left an eighth inch on either side, that would be plenty. So that means I want this to be a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to go a little bit farther than that. I'm going to actually make it three eighths of an inch. I won't have the, I, that way we don't have, I'll uh, show you over here. What we don't want is we don't want to have a situation where our panel, the bevel is right up tight here because that'll do the same thing as that expands. Now you're putting pressure on there and it's going to lift this piece off and possibly break it. So we're going to allow this to come out to about here before we go up. And that again adds a little bit of interest to the piece. So I'm going to allow for a three eighths, three eighths of an inch flat spot. And I would make that a little bit bigger if this was a larger panel. And we're gonna, we've got to do that line all the way around. All right, error number one, that doesn't need to be done in pencil because all this material is going to remove. That could have been done with my marking gauge. The line that I'm referring to is the inside line, the one that outlines the actual inside part of the panel. So I'm going to come in here and mark this. What? We need to go in and remove all of this material. 
all the way around. So the easiest way to do that, although you could plane it, I'm going to saw off the end portions and I'll plane the long ones. So I'm going to use my bench hook and my bench crosscut saw. Put that in the vise and just use a wide chisel and we'll just work that out. The end ones are easy to do, being end grain. Once you cut, cut it across this way, tap that out with a chisel. The long ones are going to have to be removed with the plane, but that's not uh, that big of a deal. Clamp that in place. I'm using what's called a skew block plane. It has a fence on it, blades exposed on this side when you remove the plate. This one's made by Lee Nelson. It's my favorite. Simply loosen the knob and set the fence so that the edge of the blade is right on that line that you want. And you can take a fairly aggressive cut with this. Just back that spin wheel off a little bit and advance the blade. Just move that fence over just a little bit more. Now I'm just going to check. And you can see I've got more material than I have here. So I'm going to work this part. And catch up. A little bit more. One more pass. Okay, now the same thing on the other side. Okay, this next step is we're going to require a specific tool. Normal bench plane, the blade doesn't go all the way to either side. So, since we've got to come in here and remove this material, we have to be able to have something that goes right to a corner. So I have three options. A shoulder plane, blade goes right to the side. Only downside to that is you'd have to step it over twice because it, the area we're going to plane is wider than the width of the shoulder plane. This is called a, a block plane, a rabbiting block plane, and again, the blade goes all the way to either side. You could certainly use that. This is a 10 and a quarter, which was called a, a carriage maker's plane or a bench rabbiting plane. I'm going to use it just because it's a little bit longer, uh, a little heavier, and again, the blade goes side to side. So that's going to be my weapon of choice. This in place. So I took a block of wood and I cut, I think it was a 24 degree angle on here. So what I want to do is I want to be able, to, the hard, as I mentioned, the hardest part in doing this is to prevent that corner from cutting across this flat spot. So I'm, this block, when clamped in place, is going to help me hold this at a fixed angle. What we have to determine is how far back or where do we position this so that that corner, when we make it all the way down, meaning down to here, is going to be right on that line. 
Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So if we set this right there, and then move that into position so that it is resting on that right there. There you go. Okay, I'm going to put a mark right there, and then I'll just get my square. Draw a line across here. And if that works, we'll just measure this inch and a two and an eighth inches. So I'll just put a note down here on the other end so we can use that if it works. Now I've got to be able to clamp this, so I'm going to move it out and move it over. I'll put the inside of that bevel right on that line. Okay, so we've got to get this lined up. And actually, I think what I'll do is use my bench plane at first just to get rid of some of that material. So I've got my blade out there quite a bit, so I'll hog off a lot. I, I can't touch this, so I've got to make sure I avoid that, but I can get rid of quite a bit of that right now. Okay, and we'll switch. And we want to watch the amount of material we have on this side so that it's coming off uniformly. If your blade's nice and sharp, even though you're cutting across the grain, you're going to get a nice smooth finish. I'm really close right here, but I'm not so close over there. So I'll start right about in the middle and just take a couple of catch up passes. Now, so I don't have to bring this back. I'm going to go down a little bit further and then I'm going to do my final cleanup pass on that surface. Use my skew block plane. Now I've got to reset my fence right about there. You kind of have to develop a sense of where when this is level, and that's just something you get as you do this over a period of time. But after one or two passes, you can check, and you don't want that tipping in, nor do you want it tipping out. Now I should be going right down to the gauge line. And it looks like I am. Well, I think I can take one more pass on here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead, set this up and do the other side exactly the same as this. Okay, to do this long edge, measure over two and an eighth. 
to make it easier to see, we'll run a line. And we'll put the inside bevel right on that line. Clamp it down. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take some of this material down. Just because I'm a little bit high and I can still see my gauge line, so I want to make sure that that surface is on the same plane as this one. can still feel a bit of a bump right here. One more pass. Okay, now we'll go resume this. Okay, that looks to be about the same amount. So I can just keep taking full length passes. What I don't want to do is have the corner of my plane run across there and leave a mark on either end. And we also want this line to come right to a point. And we still have a bit of material to remove. And a little bit heavier down here, so I'll take not quite a full length. Okay, that looks to be pretty good. I want to be able to finish this right from the plane and not have to go in and sand it at all. So now what we'll do is get rid of these mill marks right here and also the layout lines. Now if you don't have access to either one of those planes that I used, they have, there's a wooden variety, you could actually make that. It's actually quite simple. I'm sure you can buy the blade and just build the plane. We're actually going to do a video on that sometime in the future. All right. Now, Last thing we'll do is on the underside, cut that to fit. I'm going to get my marking gauge out, clear the bench off, and we'll go through that final step. I need to mark a quarter of an inch thickness, but because I've had to go on in and f I've had to go in and fine tune this, it may not be on the same plane all the way around. I can't use my marking gauge because I don't have enough room down this way, so I'm going to use my 
my uh, combination square. I'm going to set it for a quarter of an inch and I'll just use my pen Go all the way around. Now we want to have that the same depth, which is right there. So we'll go in and score a line. I'll do my ends first. So I'm going to bring that out a little bit farther. I want to be able to use my part of my frame as a guide to determine when that fits. I'll just pay attention to the pen line to get it close. <coughs> Just a little bit snug right here. Just a partial pass. Okay, that's good. Now do the same thing on the other end and then we'll do the long edges. Okay, now, with this one, just like on the front side, we want to try not to cross over and leave a mark on the end. But we can use it as a guide in terms of how deep to go. Every once in a while, I'll stop and just look at the end, and you can tell by the amount of material you have right here whether or not you're tipping out or in, and then just adjust accordingly. You can also determine how much material you have left to remove. Something worth noting is it's a lot less noticeable when the line is coming across this way than if it's coming across that way. So if you do these two first and then do those, save yourself a lot of grief. Okay, one left. Okay, all four rabbits cut. It's unfortunate there's a big crack in here, but I had a nice clear piece of pine. I wanted to utilize it. Obviously, I wouldn't use it on the door I was going to put on the piece of furniture. The last step in this is just to clean up the back. And again, I want to take the surface right from the plane. If you're needing help on sharpening, we did a video, we'll leave a link called 32 Seconds to Sharp. It's a very quick process, but it'll leave your plane iron in a condition that you will not be able to match the surface with any grit of sandpaper. Beautiful. And the, what you get off of a plane just cannot come close to, uh, pardon me, cannot compare to what you would get with sandpaper. Now, that is ready. I would, uh, there are times when I would actually put a finish on this before I actually put it in the frame. But whatever way you're going to do, the last thing you want to do is once you've assembled it in, you want all of the movement to be equal from center. Meaning, if you don't do something to pin it in the middle, it may be a little tight on one side or the other, and when it does shrink or expand, it's going to move unevenly, and it, your gap won't be the same. So what I would do after putting that in is I would either use a small finished nail or just a round toothpick, drill a hole right in the middle, put that pin down so it goes all the way through this piece, all the way through the panel, and then partially into the other side of the of the uh, groove and then that'll keep that nice and centered so there's your 
handmade raised panel, even though I did out of pine. Great wood to learn on. It's uh, so easy to cut and so nice, and it ages beautifully. Good luck. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.